Wow, thank you all so much. Uh, really, thanks especially to, to Bob for inviting me here. It's always great to be the third most interesting board member of the club. I know they wanted to get Mike Brune out here, and he couldn't come, and they wanted to get our new president, Aaron Mayer, and he couldn't come. So they said, Director Dorsey, you're going to Rhode Island. So it's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, and it's a hard act to follow, Greg. But I'm going to try, because if anybody is right on the money, we know that war is not good for anybody. But it's curious, then, that we're in between Major General Green and Commodore Perry. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's curious that we're here. And if we can think about history and remember history, we can think about that they were in a battle, a long battle that not oftentimes we think about anymore, the Siege of Boston, the Battle of Harlem Heights, Brandywine, and on and on and on and on and on. And I think that that history that we stand in front of now should remind us of the kind of battle that we're in for a green, clean future. And it's not going to be a one rally battle. It's not going to be a one event is going to bring success. It's going to be a long, long march. But I'll tell you that that march is closer than we know. Victory is closer than we know. And it might even be the case that victory was yesterday. The future was yesterday. How is that the case? For the past month, me and my colleagues at the Joint Center for Political Economic Studies in D.C. and some other folks in the Sierra Club, we've been working with the legislature and the governor in Hawaii. And on Friday, the governor announced that he would let the world know on Monday, just a couple days ago, that he was committing Hawaii to 100% renewable energy, not by 2050, but by 2045. And if you know anything about an island, you know that they can't call next door. There's no Massachusetts for Hawaii to call. There's no Connecticut for Hawaii to call. There is Hawaii doing what's not an engineering impossibility, what's not a technological impossibility, but what is politically necessary. It's Hawaii doing and committing two days ago what we've got to get places like Rhode Island to commit to, and that's a pathway to 100% renewable energy. Solar and wind, not nukes. Solar and wind, clean and green energy. It can be done, and the 50th state has shown the other 49 that it can be done. The future was yesterday. The future was yesterday. Just last week, five oddballs that you would have never thought would have been with us. What kind of oddballs am I talking about? Five oil majors came out and said, we got to put a price on carbon. Now that, that, that's just jump change now. Took, you know, Royal Dutch Shell was out in the lead of it. The CFO was sort of teeing up the press conference in Paris, took him 187 years, you know, took him 15 years after we started at the Sierra Club to say, not only are we going to put a price on carbon, and not only do we have to, but we need to keep coal in the ground. Yeah. Shell Oil is telling the world that we've got to keep coal in the ground. But I'll tell you folks that that is just remarkable. And these days, in the extraordinary times, remarkable is mediocre. We've got to be extraordinary in extraordinary times. We've got to not just recognize that, like we do at the Sierra Club, that we've got to get beyond coal. We recognized that 15 years ago and began that campaign to deliver that. And to this day, we've closed down 180 coal-fired power plants, and we're on course to close down another 175. That's called being extraordinary in the face of extraordinary times. Yeah. Not just remarkable. Yeah. But I'll tell you though, it was... Yes. What's that? No, I'm going to come to that in a minute now. Because <laughs> y'all keep asking me, why is Sheldon thinking about gas? I'm going to save the answer for a little bit. You know, when we look in his finances, we see that, you know, he's a good guy and we like him at the club. But it just turns out that National Grid is one of his biggest energy sponsors. So that might be the answer. 
while he's with natural gas. But let's let's not let's let's keep with thinking about this idea that the future is and was yesterday. A week after, two weeks ago, a week after those oil ministers got together in Paris and said we got to keep coal in the hole, my buddy at Stanford, Mark Jacobson, said, you know what? In the United States, we've got the the plan and the pathway to have every state in the nation be 100% renewable. We've got the plan and the pathway, and Mark and the guys at Stanford have laid out the plans and the pathways to do it. This is not rocket science, folks. This can be done. The barrier is politics, and who's going to deliver it? You know, Juice could have done it better. The people like yourselves, the people are going to help push this forward, and that's what's got to be done. But even a week before Mark released his paper, which was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, the Saudi minister for oil, who also happens to be the head of OPEC, some of y'all know the guy Al Naimi. Al Naimi said, look, in Saudi Arabia, we see a future not exporting oil. We see a future committed to green energy. We see a solar future in Saudi Arabia. That was three weeks ago. A lot of people didn't hear that message. But I'll tell you, if Saudi Arabia is thinking about mid-century not being on oil. And what did Al Naimi say? He said, we're going to not export oil. We want to export gigawatts in the form of electricity. The future is yesterday, folks. The future is yesterday. And just a few days, even before Al Naimi spoke, one of the largest insurance agencies in Europe, one of the largest on the planet, they said that they're going to divest completely out of coal and fossil fuels because that's the future. Things that we thought were impossible are possible and are being done. But then we come to the great state of Rhode Island. Yeah. Yeah. We come to the great state of Rhode Island. And we know that Rhode Island doesn't have a formal plan to mitigate its own climate emissions. They've got a plan that's there, but it's not robust enough to get the job done. It's not robust enough to get the job done. We've got some folks in the region that want to ramp up the renewable portfolio standards at one and a half percent a year. And they know that that kind of speed isn't fast enough to get us where we need to be, where we need to be, and where we need to go. We've got to do more. We've got to do more. Marion Gold, you out there? You out there, Marion? you got to help us do more. Help us do more. Janice, you got to keep the pressure on her. That kind of work, it's important. Certainly, Rhode Island is leading. You're leading in remarkable ways, and it's amazing pleasure at the Sierra Club to be helping in this remarkable work. But folks, being remarkable in extraordinary times is not enough. We've got to be extraordinary. We've got to be extraordinary in extraordinary times. And what does it mean to be extraordinary? Being extraordinary is having a governor that recognizes that she's got to urge the EPA to have a science-based ozone standard and she's got to do that publicly. That's being extraordinary. That's being extraordinary. Putting that in black and white, that's called extraordinary action. What does being extraordinary mean? It means that you've got to get out of the way of old 20th century gas pipelines like the Algonquin expansion. You can't invest in the 20th century if you're about the 21st century. Yeah. You've got to put yourself out ahead. Out ahead is doing what deep water is doing. Yeah. Deep water wind. But I'll tell you, folks, and I just met with the CEO, a great guy, Greg. Those five windmills that he's going to put down in the next year, I think even he'll agree. That's remarkable, but it's not extraordinary. He's got a plan to put out 200 or 250 more. That's called extraordinary. Let's, 
not put in a billion dollars into a gas pipeline of the 20th century. Let's move that money to the future of the 21st century. That's called extraordinary. That's called extraordinary. We've got to be extraordinary in extraordinary times. The future, people, is about rethinking energy power. And it's not just about rethinking energy power, it's about thinking, rethinking power relations. Because when we rethink the origins of our energy, when, re, when we rethink who's delivering the energy and the cost of who's delivering the energy, we know that we've got to begin to put in place the steps to get out ahead of that old, dirty 20th century energy and lead the way in building out green, renewable, clean, solar, wind, energy. That is the future. That's the path we've got to take. And I'll tell you folks, that path is a triple win. It's a triple win. It's a win not just for the environment. A lot of my colleagues in the Sierra Club think that's what we got to be fighting for. That's the only thing we've got to do. I'll tell you, when we build that path to clean, green, renewable energy that's solar and wind based and driven, we not only protect the environment, we protect young people playing on that hill over there that they were playing on and running around out here. We protect public health. We protect people that suffer from asthma disproportionately. We protect young children that suffer from asthma in particular that enable or disables them from going to school. We protect more than just the environment. We protect lives, we protect economies, we protect individuals right in their pocketbook, right in their wallet, right where it matters. And that's what we've got to do. That's called being extraordinary in extraordinary times. So I want to encourage you all to stand with the Sierra Club on doing something that some of even my fellow directors on the board don't think is possible. It's delivering and working to deliver 100% renewable energy, not by 2050, not by 2030, but making that the demand that we can do that by 2030. That is being extraordinary. That's being extraordinary in extraordinary times. Stand with us to do that. Stand with us not only to keep coal in the hole, oil under the soil, and gas in the land. Stand with us to do something extraordinary for our children, for the environment, and for the economy. We can do it, and you all are going to help us do it. You're already helping us do it. Do it. So thank you very much.